Good welcome, and thanks for being here today at a really special day when we get to award um, members of the Sheriff's Office and volunteers and others for the good deeds that they do, um, the hard work that gets recognized on these once a year awards to people who are nominated and selected from within the organization, from their colleagues and from uh, upper command staff as they progress through the award system. So I just wanna say thank you for being here. Um, if you're willing and able, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Um, I just want to jump right into this because we've got a lot of awards to give out today and want to be respectful of your time and also uh, not take up air time that the presenters of these awards are going to speak about each of the, of the members that are receiving awards today. So we can kick off our SAR, SAR volunteer, our Search and Rescue Volunteer of the Year, Nathan Lawrence. Uh, Nathan Lawrence volunteered to be part of King County Search and Rescue starting in 2010. Nathan is an active member of the 4x4 and Explorer Search and Rescue. Nathan isn't just assisting with his vehicle, he also assists on the grueling ground missions. Since joining King County Search and Rescue, Nathan has participated in over 337 actual search and rescue missions. He has driven over 22,000 miles in his personal vehicle. Uh, to obtain this level of service, Nathan has received over 3,000 hours of training. It is unknown how many vacation hours Nathan has actually taken from his day job at Microsoft, but I'm sure it's in the thousands. When a call goes, when a call goes out, uh, search, and rescues, search and rescuers return the call. Nathan is the first to call back asking what needs to be done and how he can assist. He organizes base camp and transports. Uh, he, asks, uh, he handles radio frequencies and uh, other logistics to include calling back additional search and rescue members and handling other logistics and resources. Nathan is an expert in computers and with radios. When problems or questions about the equipment come up, Nathan gets the first call. In February of 2019, Puget Sound area was hit with a massive snowstorm that lasted several days. King County Search and Rescue was one of the first to get the call for help. Nathan helped staff the King County Emergency Management um, offices. Just a few hours into this event, every department head or manager knew Nathan on a first name basis. Department heads from numerous King County agencies would directly contact Nathan and request employee transportation. Nathan would locate strategically staged vehicles and coordinate the transports. During this event, King County Search and Rescue made nearly 200 transports of mission essential workers to job sites in order to keep emergency services in King County operational. It is with the highest standards and traditions of the King County Sheriff's Office and my pleasure and honor to present the King County Search and Rescue Volunteer of the Year Award to Nathan Lawrence. Thanks, Chief Olmstead. I appreciate that. Uh, next up, our Volunteer of the Year, who is Makara Reed, and presenting her award will be Major Bennett and Captain Pingree. The new Dan Pingree. No, uh, he unfortunately is ill today, so he was unable to make it. Um, before I start with Makara, I would like to introduce her family who's here today, her husband Cody and her daughters Keely and Mia. Say hi. Uh, so in December, I transferred downtown, but prior to that, I was the chief out in Sammamish, and Makara was one of our volunteers. I have to tell a quick funny story first. So there's so many, but... Uh, I, I uh, end up getting this email from, from HR and backgrounds, and they're asking, um, hey, do you, Makara Reed, can you give us a, you know, an explanation on her character and what you think about her? I said, who is that? I've never heard of that person before. And uh, he writes back and says, well, she says she works with you every day. Well, I've always called her Kara. <laughs> so um, anyway, so I'm so glad I got her name correct. Uh, I was going crazy there. 
So uh, Kara, sorry, Kara, I'm gonna still call you that, uh, joined the uh, volunteer program in the city of Sammamish in August of 2018. Uh, in the year 2019, she volunteered over 700 hours to the Sammamish Police Department, which is huge. Uh, she was there almost every day and um, assisted Elena Hall, where Sergeant Elias, I know you're hiding in the way back, Sergeant Elias and I in a number of tasks. There was no task she was not willing to assist in. Um, one of her big tasks was helping with National Night Out. Uh, and with the help of Elena Hall, uh, Makara and her were able to put us in for a national award, uh, which we ranked 17th in the nation. That was pretty cool, two years in a row uh, for putting a video together for National Night Out in Sammamish. Uh, she also assisted in set up and showed up, the, showed up at the event herself. Um, she participated in our Very Merry Sammamish, our Halloween happening at Central Washington University and our uh, disaster preparedness affair and, and many other things. So her day-to-day -day contributions were huge, but on top of that, uh, Kara started our very, very first Sammamish Police Foundation. It's a 501c3. Uh, she worked tirelessly for months to start that up and get our business license. Um, it was a lot of work, a lot of work. Uh, and the first task was a Toys for Tots drive and a food drive where uh, the donations and the ads she put out, we got 600 pounds of food for the food bank, for the Issaquah Food Bank. So that was all on a car. So she also assisted in our drug summit uh, where we had some fentanyl related deaths. She put together a number of kits for parents at our forum. Um, she is now working on a blood drive. That's the newest thing for our Sammamish Police Foundation. And I, I just can't say enough amazing things uh, about her. We've been so blessed to, to have her within the department. Um, she puts up with us. My, my last funny story is, you know, it's busy in, uh, in, a, in, in a precinct. It's busy as a city chief, those of you that are out there, or in any job that we're doing. And uh, so I'll come in and, and Makara's there and I'll say, hey, can you help me with this or this or something else comes up. Uh, same with Sergeant Elias. So one day, I wish we had a PowerPoint because I'd show this picture. I come in, and if you've ever seen the movie Bird Box, have you seen that movie? Where the blindfolds can't look at the evil or, you know, you pass away. So I walk in, and I'm about to ask her something, and they're all wearing blindfolds. So now every time I see her, like, don't look her in the eye. She's going to ask you to do something. Um, <laughs> there's constantly a blindfold somewhere. Anyway, thank you so much for all of your hard work. Really appreciate it. All right, next up we have Explorer of the Year. Major Pat Blitchley will be presenting to Daniel Jose. Or actually, that'll be DJ Nessel, Chief of Maple Valley Police Department, and I'm really quick on my feet, so, <laughs> Chief. Thanks, boss. So I'd like to start off by um, introducing Daniel Joss's parents and fiance. Uh, we've got uh, Dawn and Amy Joss, and we'll let Amy stay seated. She's got the little one in her arms. And his fiance, Audrey Thomas, seated right between them. You're supposed to stand up and be embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> So also with us today uh, is Mayor Sean P. Kelly sitting over here in the corner. Uh, he's the mayor of the city of Maple Valley. Um, he's not just a figurehead that's come here. He has been involved with the Explorer program since as long as I remember Sean P. Kelly uh, at the Sheriff's Office Precinct 3. He later on, uh, you know, Explorers, Explorer Advisor, and then hooked up with uh, Major Michelle Bennett when she was the Chief of Police for the city of Maple Valley and she started this program. And the reason I bring this out and take an extra minute or two, to, because these, this needs to be celebrated as a program that started with some seeds planted by Michelle and Sean, who's been in the city. He went on to become a councilman and is now the current mayor of the city. He financially helps ensure that the council funds this program. And as a result, Daniel is standing next to me today. One of his co-explorers that he was in the post with for many years, just graduated from the police academy, Matt Toscano, Another one who was the major of the post, Paige Hankins, just started the police academy. And he's not here today, but Kevin Johnson, one of the newest officers to join the city of Maple Valley, started in our Explorer post, went to work at the uh, uh, 
State Patrol, did his couple of years there, then lateral back over to the Sheriff's Office, and after he did his time out in the field, found his way back to the city of Maple Valley where he's currently working, and he is an Explorer Advisor. So you can see what's going on here. It's just amazing, you know, almost like a cadet program, but not everybody comes into law enforcement. But what they do leave out of the Explorers is with leadership, self-confidence, and, you know, success. They go to college or go into their trades. The ones who do come back to law enforcement, we are that much better for it. We know what we're getting, and they know what they're getting into. So wanted to congratulate. Um, Michelle, thank you very much for what you started. Uh, I walked in there six and a half years ago, and I won't, I was an explorer myself in LA when I grew up, but when you come in and you got a whole city to run and they say, oh, and then ancillary duty is explorers, and you have like 25 of them at the time, I'm like, thanks very much. <laughs> but you know what? It was a blessing, and to watch these folks mature from like the ages of 14 up, it's like cheating and having your own kids once again, but they go away after a couple hours every day. <laughs> but you get to watch six foot four and at my recent physical the doc said hey you know six foot two and i said no i'm six foot four and he goes no you're not you're six foot two <laughs> so he's going up and i'm going down um and as i said michelle was there for 10 years uh it's award-winning post it's been winning the awards left and right uh, they go to the national uh things they go up to snowmish county uh, so much so that the city finally bought a, a trophy case with the help of robin our extraordinary executive assistant and it sits up in City Hall and it's not your typical trophy case that you put the trophies in and it gathers dust. The trophies go in and they're rotated so fast because they're constantly going out and winning these different uh, exercises that they do throughout the state and, and interstate. And one more person to recognize, I think you're the only advisor here. Greg Victor, can you stand up? Greg is our senior uh, advisor. And he wants to be modest but he puts in countless hours and time uh, to do this, and he is almost like a father figure to these folks, and he starts them off and when well, they're done, and look at the success. Uh, he and his fellow advisors, who are not here today, they do an amazing job. So I just make sure they get the resources, they're doing all the grunt work, so. With that, let's talk about Daniel. So, <clears throat> uh, Daniel Joss has been explorer with the King County Sheriff's Office since April of 2014. Uh, he entered the program at Precinct 3 at the age of 14. Needless to say, the other advisors have watched him grow up, literally, and fill out and mature over the five and a half years that he's been with the Post. When he joined the Post in 2014, he was 14 years old and was homeschooled in a very busy house. And we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, Daniel was committed to the Post from early on. He soaked up what was being taught and wanted more. He quickly became a leader in the Post he was appointed the Master Police Explorer in early 2015. Later that year, Daniel was promoted to sergeant after going through a testing process that included a presentation on an assigned topic and then an oral board with panelists that he did not know. Daniel was promoted eventually to captain of the post in July of 2019 uh, and is the highest ranked and longest tenured explorer by two and a half years. He took over the post and the people that he took over from were his peers, Paige Hankins and Matt Toscano. So they moved on, he took it over, and that post has not missed a beat. Uh, it just continues to be an award-winning post. Um, he's worked tirelessly over the years at many events in our busiest posts. Uh, Dano has been there working, setting examples, and leading other explorers, and is often the explorer in charge. He has uh, been to several competitions over the years, the Federal Way Challenge, Yakima Apple Cup, all three years of the Snohomish County Challenge, and each year our team, led by Captain Joss, left the uh, Snohomish County with numerous trophies. This includes this year when our team only consisted of four members, half of whom have been, never been to a competition before, uh, and they still walked away with six of the trophies. Uh, our trophy case displayed, as I said, is packed and has continued rotating. Explore Captain Joss has donated more than 2,200 hours of time giving back to his communities and assisting the King County Sheriff's Office and our contract partners. He has participated in Shop of the Cop for years, setting the example of what it means to serve and give back. A little bit about the family. Daniel comes from a family where he is one of an ever-increasing double-digit children at home. He is one of about 21 uh, children in a very busy Joss home. The family has adopted many children from different countries, many with special needs and disabilities. Daniel is the oldest male child in the large family, 
And part of his responsibilities in the Joss home is to help care for his siblings, do the other chores in and around the house. Daniel also works a full-time job and has since graduated from high school. He's not afraid of hard work and putting forth an effort to get things done and when he's not even asked to. Um, could help if I have my glasses and read the next. Uh, uh, overall, it has been a pleasure to watch Daniel come and mature in front of us as an amazing young man, and we are proud to have him in the Sheriff's Office family. Um, and I'm, I'm also proud now to uh, award Daniel the Sheriff's Office Explorer of the Year. Uh, for those of you familiar with this, I will remind uh, uh, Captain Floor that Chief Nessel just took all your time. So you can sit back down there. Now, next up, uh, Captain Floor, Comspec of the Year, Brandy Kamen. All right, so DJ stole my time, so I'm going to cut out the poem that I was going to do at the beginning. But <laughs> this is Communication Specialist of the Year, Brandy Caven. Now, Cavan, sorry. Most of us know her as Brandy Drake, which is why I just made a mistake. But congratulations, because Brandy just married Deputy Chris Cavan, who's in the back, and they're recently married last month. So congratulations to the two of them. This award at the, com at the comm center is, is huge. This year it was voted on by 95 employees, so it wasn't just the comm specs, it was the entire group of employees at the communications center. It was almost overwhelming for Brandy, which is well deserved. Brandy's been a communications center employee since 2001. Currently she's a mentor, call taker trainer, dispatcher trainer, and senior dispatcher. I lateraled up here in 2005. Uh, Brandy was a dispatcher then, um, and I think every police officer in this room has had Brandy be that calm voice on the air. You always know as a cop, or as a sergeant, or as a captain, when your dispatcher has it together. And I see these heads nodding. I was always relieved when I had you on, oh, I'm gonna get choked up. When I had you, when I had Brandy on the air. So calm, so with it, so organized. It got us what we need, and she was right there with us on the calls. <clears throat> so. Let's bring it to the here and now. So I, I became the captain a few years ago at the comm center and we've really struggled with staffing and this is an example of what Brandy's all about. We were gonna be missing a dispatcher and I knew Brandy was going on vacation so she was counted out. We were, and Kathy and I were banging our heads against the, the wall. Um, how are we gonna fill this slot because we're in the process of hiring. Came to work the next day and Brandy's sitting there. And I'm like, what, what are you doing here? She changed her flights because she said it didn't cost anything, but still, she changed her flights to be there at work because she didn't want one of her coworkers to be, to be mandatory. That's what kind of person this is because she cares so much about her coworkers. Brandy's the type of employee, especially as leaders, sergeants, captains, whatever, you have those employees when they speak, you listen because the motivation is not about their self, it's about others. If Brandy brings something to Kathy or myself, we know to listen because she's just trying to better the place. I'm going to leave you with some quotes from her peers from her nomination. Brandy is truly an expert and makes this very difficult job look effort effortless. Brandy elevates everyone in the room. Brandy is always there to help new hires and her coworkers. Brandy will always help. Brandy is a leader. And the last part is 100% true. Congratulations to Brandy. The plaque that was being held up there um, is, hangs at the communications center and uh, people's names are added to it each year. So that's uh, what was being held. Next up, we have our screener of the year, Karen Bushaw, and presenting to her is Sergeant Wolf. Good morning, I'm Sergeant Eric Wolf of the Court Protection Unit. And we're here to celebrate Karen Bushaw today. She's our screener of the year. And where do I begin to talk about why Karen Bouchard is a CPU screener of the year? I could tell you about her ever positive outlook on life and everything in it and how contagious it is. That's not it. I could tell you how she manages 10 screeners spread across the RJC, Altmer District Court, Burien District Court, Nisqua District Court. That's not it either. I could tell you about how she maintains control of the entrance to the RJC, which is not an easy task. Manages her staff and her bubbly way of speaking to people no matter how difficult the situation is all while displaying her contagious smile, that's not it. 
I could tell you how energetic she is, always moving, literally never sitting. I've never seen her take a seat outside of her annual training day when we make her take a seat, but that's not it. I could tell you how she gets along with everyone and genuinely tries to make everyone's day a little brighter, but that's not it either. Karen is a screener of the year for all these things and more. She manages her crew, works with them, keeps them focused, trains the new hires. If you've ever trained, you know how challenging that can be and does so with an ease that's rarely seen. She is one of the most positive people I have ever had the pleasure of working with. I like to visit the RJC from time to time and because I work downtown, she's down there in Kent, and she always makes me feel welcome as if I'm part of the RJC crew and I'm just the outsider. She, she has to find the backfill when someone calls out sick and someone has to find a screener to backfill a district court with no notice and get them there for the court to open. So if you're trying to find a screener from Kent to get up to Issaquah, so the Issaquah opens at 8.30, you know it's not even logistically easy to do. Uh, she has to forecast her staffing needs, especially when we're having to have secondary screening for trials. She works with her fellow leads from the youth center and the downtown courthouse to ensure that not only her facility is staffed, but all the others as well. Shifting personnel from one site to another as needed. Kieran has come to know many of the people that work at the RJC. And I've often seen her greeting people asking about their family or a vacation they just went on or something else. Someone, she does these things as someone only generally invested in their job can do. Lead screener Karen Bouchard embodies the KCSO core values of leadership, integrity, service, and teamwork, and that's why she's our screener of the year. Congratulations, Karen. Next up is the professional support uh, person of the year. But first of all, before I announce who that is and ask her chief to come up, I want to read to you something about the Sabrina Grimes Professional Support Employee of the Year Award is presented annually to the King County Sheriff's Office Professional Support Employee who best demonstrates the core values of leadership, integrity, service, and teamwork. From 2013 through 2019, Sabrina Grimes served as an Administrative Specialist 2 in the King County Sheriff's Office Record Unit and at Precinct 4. She met every individual she encountered with a steadfast kindness and unwavering respect that made them feel hard, or excuse me, made them feel heard and valued. Sabrina's work ethic and positivity was infectious to the public as well as her coworkers. She always led by example and encouraged those around her to do their best. We present this award to the professional support employee who most embodies Sabrina's devotion to public service her thoroughness, diligence, integrity, and compassion. It's with great pleasure that I announce that Jessica Klein is receiving this award this year and presenting the award will be Chief Patty Cole Tyndall. Hello, I'm Patty Cole Tyndall. I oversee the Technical Services Division and I have the pleasure of introducing Jessica Klein, who is being awarded the first time, this is the first time we're doing the Sabrina Grimes uh, Professional Staff Person of the Year Award. Jessica, I'll ask you to introduce your family. Um, I have my mom, Lori, one of my three sisters, Malia, my dad, Terry, and my five-year or four-year-old son, Mason. <laughs> you should have just caught his little face that he made. To... Okay. Um, so a little bit about Jessica. She grew up in Southern California and Reno, Nevada prior to coming to Seattle. She attended the University of Colorado at Boulder and received a Bachelor of Arts in English Literature. Jess has been married for 11 years to her wonderful husband, Carl, and they have a terrific son, Mason, who is four years old. Hi, Mason. There we go. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that we'd like to share is Jessica and her husband are also expecting baby Klein number two, which should be here in September. Congratulations. So prior coming to the King County Sheriff's Office, Jess was HR manager at Target for over 11 years, where she oversaw the HR functions for several stores. While joining us from 2012 is when she started to join us here, she's had many roles in HR, including an HR associate, HR analyst, and now HR manager. 
Jess enjoys reading and loves watching movies. She recently completed her 12th year watching the annual Oscar Best Picture Showcase. So if you don't know what that is, because I didn't, it's a two-day event where a local theater shows all the movies that are being nominated for Best Picture. So it's two days, full days of watching these movies. So that's something that Jess enjoys doing each year. She's also a huge Disneyland fan. She loves stuffed animals and watches Disney movies all the time with her family. She enjoys spending time with their family and spending time watching her four-year-old grow and prosper. Jess described her favorite part of the job as the variety that the job brings and the interactions she has with of others. She believes the work is meaningful and it provides a sense of purpose that allows her to give back by supporting the officers in the field. Jess enjoys being the go-to person and being knowledgeable of how things all fit together. She takes pride in understanding not only her area of expertise, but all the business needs. So I asked her staff to give me some comments that I might be able to share today. So I want to share a few of those. Jess has always been supportive and encouraging of her team. She is someone who we can go to with any type of question, and she always gives good guidance. We all have the utmost confidence in her and are so grateful for her leadership. Another thing that probably most people know is how funny and witty she is. She can say just one thing that lightens the whole mood and makes everybody laugh. Someone else provided that uh, Jess takes the whole team every month on a weekly, on a monthly Starbucks treat. And to them, that really says something that she cares enough to take them and do that. One other thing to share, uh, Jess has resident cockroaches that share her office. And you can hear her down the hall when they come out to say hello. So that's, <laughs> sorry about that, yeah. Um, one other thing I want to share is Jess definitely um, tries to encourage her staff to do the best work possible and tries to do that with some fun and humor. So the background detectives report to Jess and their job is primarily to background folks for suitability, to determine suitability of employment here at the Sheriff's Office. So part of what they do is they have to prepare a memo that says whether somebody should be hired or not on occasion, not often, but on occasion, she has to return the memo and ask them to dig a little deeper, meaning they need to flush out that report in a little more detail. So some time ago, one of the detectives went out and bought a plastic shovel, painted it gold, and gave it to Jess to give out to the next person who needed to dig a little deeper. So they all have hooks now on their desk, and they could be the next recipient of the golden shovel. So it's just kind of a cute little thing that Jess has incorporated with her group that, you know, is, is fun. Uh, just in closing, Jess is a role model for others and really is a special person. She treats people with respect and finds a way to communicate with others that is effective. She is well respected by her colleagues as well as her staff. I'm very proud of Jess and her many accomplishments. Congratulations to you for being the recipient of the 2019 Sabrina Grimes Professional Staff Person of the Year Award. Next up, I'm excited to announce uh, our Marshal of the Year. Um, and again, we'll be visited by Sergeant Wolf, so this is just a reminder to leave my notes on the podium. And uh, I'd like to introduce Mike Riddell as the recipient of this year's Marshal of the Year. Uh, Sergeant Wolf for the Corps Protection Unit, and I'm here with Mike Riddell. He came to work with us uh, December 31st of 2018. Uh, he came to us with over 30 years experience with Seattle PD. He had spent the last 20 or so years filing cases and was in and out of the courthouse frequently, and as such, he came to know the Marshals. And if you know my Marshals, they're always trying to recruit people, and they should recruit Michael. Mikkel, excuse me. Marshals go through some on-the-job training to become familiar with the work inside the courthouse, and Mikkel didn't, he almost needed no training at all. I think he spent a little too much time with my marshals being recruited. It didn't take long for Mikkel to become a favorite of the people that also work inside the courthouse, and after starting at the end of December 2018, um, Mikkel was named in particular at a security check-in meeting in, at the end of February 2018, so just 
two months into his tenure with us, the presiding judge and his staff had noticed how professional and courteous and the, the level of service that Mikhail provides, and he was singled out. Um, his work performance stood out to them. His professionalism and efforts to be approachable by everyone made him an instant favorite among the, the courthouse patrons. Mikhail makes his rounds inside the courthouse when not on post, getting to know many people here. Not that he needed to introduce himself after filing cases for almost 20 years. Mikhail could often be found on the first floor near the ATM, watching people come and go, and with people often stopping to chat with him or offering him a greeting of the day as they went by to the elevators. Mike is always approachable. Everyone's always walking up to Mike. Mike became a favorite because he made people feel comfortable here. Last November, he was on post at 3rd Avenue when someone told him an assault was taking place outside. You might have seen a little bit on the news on that. Without hesitation, he immediately took action going outside to see what was going on. The screeners at the station did freeze the entrance. Other marshals came to assist, but by the time the marshals got there, Mike had already taken care of business. He had found the assailant, engaged him, and then had to use his taser to subdue him, bring him under, bring him under control, and take him into custody, thus stopping the assault that was taking place. This action made Mike a local celebrity inside the courthouse. He was hearing thank you and I'm glad you're here every day. Not just hearing it every day, but all day, every day. Mike took his action without hesitation, effectively bringing the violent situation to a peaceful end. Mike is a one of a kind marshal in case he is so as fortunate to have him. And he is our marshal of the year. Congratulations. Mike. All right, next up, uh, we have our reserve deputy of the year. And that's, uh, it's my understanding he won't be attending, but it's Derek Tiplin, is that correct? All right, who's, uh, ah, Major Fenton, come on up. We're gonna tell you a little bit about Derek though. And um, I'm Robin Fenton. I am the major at the North Precinct. And Reserve Deputy Derek Tiplin is a reserve that works out of the city of Sammamish. And a little bit of a history with him is um, he was a he is a commercial pilot for one of the big, well-known airlines. Um, had a job as a pilot. There were budget cuts. He got laid off. Tried to figure out what he wanted to do um, because he couldn't fly and decided he was gonna be a police officer. He got hired by one of our agencies on the east side, was a police officer for four years, and the airlines came back and said, we're ready to bring you back. So he went back to his job as a pilot, but could not let go of how much he loved being a police officer, so now he does both. He is a pilot for his career, and he is a reserve deputy for us up in the city of Sammamish. He is flying as we speak, that's why he's not here but I know he'd appreciate the recognition. Um, a little bit about Derek. Derek has been a reserve officer for, um, since, for, since February of 2015, and he has volunteered about over 850 hours of his time to the city of Sammamish and the King County Sheriff's Office. He um, has dedicated numer numerous hours to doing prisoner transports, and those in the field know that that's not really something that everybody enjoys doing, but Derek sets up his, his schedule so that he comes in to do the prisoner transports, which allows the patrol deputies to stay in the field, focus on their duties, and the transports get done, and keeps the city fully staffed. In addition to the prisoner transports, he's been very involved in the community events in the city of Sammamish, Rigapalooza, that's one of them, and, um, and he also played a big part in the national night out for the city, which they came in 16th, 17th? 17th across the country. So he is very, very well thought of. The city of Sammamish actually recognized him as one of their top volunteers in the city for his 200 hours of service. And he is valuable to us. He's valuable to the city and the sheriff's office. And it is for that reason that he is being recognized as our reserve of the year. So if you see him, Derek Tiplin, um, take the time to congratulate. Thank you. I was thinking about we could take a picture together, Major, and give it to him as, yeah. Um, next up, uh, we have a new edition of an award this year, and it's the PTO, uh, the Patrol Training Officer Award of the Year. And presenting that award is gonna be Major Anderson, but the PTO receiving it is Mike Manzanares. 
Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Jesse Anderson. I'm the Precinct 4 major. I oversee the unincorporated areas of Precinct 4 in the Burien uh, Precinct. And uh, I have the privilege to uh, be able to present the award to MPO Mike Manzanares. And for those of you who know Mike, you don't call him Mike, right? You call him Manny. So we're going to refer to him as, as his legal name, Manny. We're going to make it his legal name today. So anyway, Manny, I've known him for a number of years. Uh, he is uh, the face of Burien area. He's spent a lot of time in Burien, most of his career working in the city of Burien. And, uh, you know, he's just made a name for himself. It's, it's a busy uh, area to work, and uh, Mike is not, Manny, is not afraid to, uh, to get in there and take care of business. One of his most um, telling accomplishments uh, out there, at least uh, in his uh, everyday capacity, is as a trainer, um, both as a PTO and MPO. Mike has been training for a long time. Uh, he's uh, trained at least 25 phase two um, new deputies. And as you know, those of you who have trained before, um, that's a lot of work. Uh, but Manny recognizes that that's the, one of the most important things we do within our agency is to train new officers. Without adequate and really superior training, uh, we wouldn't be who we are. Um, a very uh, stellar agency with uh, highly trained people out there because we expect a lot of our individuals, our de deputies out there to go out and take care of business on their own and not rely on uh, a lot of support. Um, that's the way we do uh, things within the sheriff's office. Uh, he is one of our most experienced trainers, and as you know, uh, especially with the number of new, uh, uh, basically our new workforce that's coming on, having experienced trainers is harder and harder to come by uh, because we're the constant rotation, people retiring, and so having uh, well-rounded, well experienced uh, trainers uh, is very important and crucial for the uh, operation of the sheriff's office. To give a quick story uh, about Manny, uh, in one of his many examples of the, the work that he does, uh, what was provided for the award was he uh, was um, asked to work with an individual who was uh, basically facing a special board. Uh, a special board is basically the last ditch effort to try to redeem yourself, but most of the time it's, it's kind of too late at that point. Um, but uh, this individual is uh, having problems associated with stress, as a lot of individuals do when uh, go, they're going through the training program. And Manny said, I'll take this guy on and, and work with him. With it, basically overnight, he had him turned around, back on his feet, down, going down the right track, and he's today a successful phase three uh, deputy, and we're not seeing any issues there. So again, having that experience there to uh, bring him around was, was huge. Um, Manny also assists with PTO school. Uh, his enthusiasm for the job and his experience is definitely much appreciated uh, in the training program. Um, he's in, participate, he does participate in oral boards uh, for the past several years. Uh, again, showing his engagement with King County Sheriff's Office hiring and training process. He wants to be part of selecting the best people to come work for our organization. Uh, Manny has shared that he wishes to continue training. He recognizes how crucial it is to have high quality trainers to support our PTO program. And uh, he's definitely proud to be a member of the King County Sheriff's Office. Uh, his daily work ethic definitely demonstrates that. Um, and he also recognizes the need to uh, constantly, uh, continually improve uh, in the training program to meet the new expectations and challenges we have within uh, police work these days. Uh, so he's willing to take that on and continue that um, endeavor. Um, he's recognized as an informal leader by his peers. Uh, I've seen that myself. Uh, his supervisors look to him for advice. I look to him for advice. He's got a lot of uh, well-grounded, um, rational uh, explanations for things and how things should be worked out. Um, and so definitely, I go, he's a go-to guy for, for that. Um, I wish the best for Manny uh, in his future with the Sheriff's Office. And uh, you know, I, I know there's a lot of great uh, PTOs out there and MPOs doing a good job that are definitely deserving of the award, but it's, I'm proud to be able to come up here and present Manny with the first PTO uh, of the year award. So congratulations, Manny. All right, next up we have our Deputy of the Year Award, and um, th this year it's kind of pretty special. 
Um, when it came down to making finalist selections, uh, the, the command staff, the executive team, the majors, those involved in final selections could not choose an individual. So they chose two. And so I'm pleased to announce Deputy of the Year, Bill Brown, Deputy of the Year, Brent Naylor, and Major Butchley and Major Fountain to present them. So good morning. Uh, my name is Pat Butchley, and I'm the uh, major at the Southeast Precinct uh, near Maple Valley. Uh, it's my honor today and privilege to present uh, MPO William Brown as a co-recipient of the Sheriff's Deputy of the Year Award. I sort of thought I would start by saying there's a million places on this planet Bill would rather be than standing here right now. <laughs> So uh, if you know him, uh, you won't meet a more humble individual. Uh, I wanted to mention that MPO Brown is here today with his wife, Detective Christy Marsalisi, over there. Um, so if you'll indulge me, I'm going to read uh, from here on out. Nomination and selection for Deputy of the Year comes primarily from coworkers. I believe it's important to highlight that this Recognition for MPO's Brown's efforts and accomplishments came first from the people who work with him every day. I would like to share with you a slightly abridged and edited um, words from Deputy Edwards, one of his coworkers, that I believe best captures why Bill is being honored today. While I know he would not approve, I am submitting this commendation for MPO Bill Brown in regards to all his work and time spent with James Douglas. James lives in the Fairwood District. He has endured some tough situations involving family members taking advantage of him and his wife of over 60 years. Nona was recently moved to a long-term care facility and James was left alone at the house. If you were to look up James in Mark 43, that's our uh, computer system, you would see that he has uh, run out of food and has sometimes broken down in sorrow over his missing wife. MPO Brown has consistently made great efforts to stay in touch with James and checks in on him frequently. Just for the month of September, he has done 12 on-view welfare checks. As a search of CAD confirmed, it showed 87 welfare checks on James by MPO Brown as of this October. When I asked MPO Brown, uh, and this is again Deputy Edwards, when I asked MPO Brown what it is he does when he checks on James, he told me that it varies from just talking with James to washing the dishes to even bringing him food. What MPO Brown has done and is still doing is what a lot of officers do all over the country, serve their communities. MPO Brown's compassion is a perfect example of this and thus proves how invaluable deputies like him are to the sheriff's office. Thank you, MPO Brown, for reminding me and others that the heart of law enforcement is service to our communities. So uh, again, uh, uh, Deputy Devin Edwards said those words. MPO, uh, MPO Brown's contacts with James are an example of the modest, humble, and dedicated service he has consistently provided over the years. Uh, for many years, uh, for his many years of dedication to the tra uh, training new deputies, his extraordinary commitment to the core values, and his daily leadership by example, MPO William Brown is being awarded co-deputy of the year for 2019. Yeah, I already introduced myself, so I won't put you through that again. But um, unlike MPO Brown, who would rather be somewhere else, my deputy loves this stuff. <laughs> 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 this is Deputy Brent Naylor. He's here today with his beautiful wife, Marilyn, and I am very pleased to be able to recognize you as a co-recipient of the Deputy of the Year. And um, I'm gonna go through, try to go through quickly. And this is, there's many things. Brent has had a very busy year. He is a guy that's been on our department for over 28 years, but instead of putting the brakes on as some might at, as they get towards the end of their career, his is full speed ahead. He has never let up. He continues to do just absolutely fabulous work, and that is why he's being recognized. To highlight just some of it, he's also a, 
Um, our forestry contract deputy, besides being on patrol, he handles the forestry contract. He also is part of this SR, the school resource officer program up in the North End. But he's instrumental. It started with um, Brent. We had an issue with a neighborhood in Falls City, high-end neighborhood, that were just getting, um, they were very frustrated because they were concerned, they were nervous, they were scared because somebody was coming into all of their yards, jumping fences, they were catching it on camera, and stealing from the, the different residents, and um, then he was gone. And we put a ton of resources. This went on for about two, three months, where we were trying to track down who it was. We were trying to find out who, who was doing what. Every time we got close, we couldn't catch them, until, da da da. <laughs> We had a, a heavy snow last January, if you remember, beginning of the year, heavy snow. And someone called, because we had had numerous community meetings, people knew who we were looking for, the description of what we, were, we wanted. Someone called to say, I think I see a guy that matches the description. And in comes Deputy Naylor, and picked up where the guy, the guy wasn't there anymore, but picked up based on what the description was, and I think they were able to confirm that it was the right person, started following footprints in the snow. And I'm talking a long trail, about over a mile, into this 16, 18 inches of snow over logs um, to find what ended up being a very elaborate camp that this individual had set up. He got the suspect into custody. We recovered a whole lot of stolen property. And as a result, put a lot of people's mind at ease as a result of excellent work by our, our Deputy Naylor. That put, I mean, it was a huge for us, a lot of resources that went into that. So then we go on, that was, that's how he started his year. And then we had an issue with a bunch of trailer thefts over on the east side, multiple trailers, the kind you pull behind your car. And MPO Naylor was the one that, just its tenacity and investigative skills unlike anybody else, he was able to put things together and we recovered multiple trailers, putting that whole issue to rest, also getting things back to victims that otherwise wouldn't have seen them. Then we had a situation, and this just happened to be, I don't know if right place, right time, but um, Brent was on his way to his district, four o'clock in the morning, came across an accident that had just occurred on Highway 202, which is the highway that goes from Falls City to Redmond. It was, it turned out to be a young mother that had been killed in the car accident, and unbeknownst to Brent at the time, but in the back seat, she had had two children, um, one an infant and one a little older than that. So Brent was checking the car and came across the young infant that was still in a car seat but upside down on the floorboard of the car. So Brent took the child out of the, out of the car, out of the car seat, kept the child warm, opened up the airway, and did everything he could holding that child until medics got there to take care of that child. The other child had actually been ejected from the car. It's another whole story, but um, it was a tragic scene that came and both those girls were transferred to the hospital. Both of them were in the hospital for weeks and both of them recovered. Um, they are now with their paternal, their grandfather. But the other part is these are big, these are scenes that are touching, but this man has a huge heart. I can't tell you how many times he went to ho the hospital. He was checking on the kids. He was talking to the family and as a result, built, built a relationship with them as well. Um, he got a Lifesaver Award for that, very deserving. And it's because of you that those girls are alive. Um, we then had an issue in Falls City Carnation. Um, this was an issue with some things going on around the bridge and around the other parts of town that were causing a lot of issues in the city. People were upset. People were calling. We get lots of calls. And they needed help. And without being asked, this is the guy, da, 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 goes in there. <laughs> <laughs> goes in there and basically takes care of the entire problem and not only takes care of the problem and then leaves, he takes care of the problem and then he does all of the steps to make sure that the problem doesn't come back. And, um, and they are very thankful in that town, as I am because I'm not getting calls anymore, because it's taken care of a lot of issues for this community. And you would think that would be busy enough for the year, but no. Brent then, um, on his way to his district, he might take a different route, but on his way to the district, he, um, the radio goes out, and it is a home invasion robbery in the city of Sammamish, in a nice area up in Sammamish. And he was within a minute. He was there less than a minute, so he just happened to be right on top of it. Gets there, and because he gets there so quickly, out the door go the two suspects. 
and um, Brent then with another deputy clears the house, they take care of the family, make sure everybody's okay. And it was this, it's, it's these years of knowledge, these years of expertise, he then goes and starts looking, goes out to the streets, as everybody else, we have K-9, everybody else tracking the suspects, he goes down and identifies the cars in the neighborhood, and there's cars lining these streets, but he finds the one car that doesn't belong in the neighborhood, which not everybody would have thought of, but sure enough, there was a car that didn't fit the neighborhood, and um, so they kind of sat on that car, and sure enough, it was probably 45 minutes to an hour later, here comes an Uber driver with two suspects in the back that were coming back to try and get into their car that had we not zoomed in on that car, they probably would have been able to get away. But da -da -da, there he goes. <laughs> there he goes, Brent, Brent took care of it. But I mean, the list goes on. That is a busy year, but like I said, this is a man that is getting to the end of his career instead of the beginning, and he's putting these newbies to shame. He never lets up, he is all about I mean, his work ethic is unlike anybody else's. He's just a honestly good guy that's out there trying to do the best thing possible. And we are fortunate that not only is he wearing the King County Sheriff's Office uniform, when he gets better, he'll be back <laughs> into it, but the King County Sheriff's Office uniform, but what a perfect guy to be representing this profession. And it's for all these reasons, you are our co-recipient Deputy of the Year. Thank you. little break in the action just to say, in a time when uh, you are under scrutiny on a regular basis, it's good to hear these awards being handed out so people understand the really good works that go unrecognized for the most part every day of the year by our King County Sheriff's Office members, whether you're a volunteer, a professional staff member, or a gun and badge toter. Uh, your work is amazing, and I appreciate it. So stand tall as you go back out there and know that the, the King County Sheriff's Office executive team believes in you and believes in the work you do. So now on to the next award. Um, next is Detective of the Year. And so I need to, uh, I get to read a little bit to you. This is the Jim Doyen Detective of, Detective of the Year Award and is presented annually to the King County Sheriff's Office detective that best exemplifies the thoroughness, diligence, integrity, and humanitarianism, humanitarianism that Jim Doyen brought to his profession. James H. Doyen served the citizens of King County with the Sheriff's Office from 1972 through 2004 as a patrolman master police officer, and a detective in the arson unit, the Green River Task Force, and our major crimes unit. Jim Doyen was respected by his colleagues and the public alike for his untiring commitment to the facts and to finding the truth. No case was ever about Jim Doyen. It was always about the victim. Jim never lost sight of that. He never backed off from the complex and difficult challenges and managed many of the more high-profile and demanding criminal investigations that were presented to this department during his tenure and major crimes. Most importantly, Jim Doyen shared his professional knowledge and innate investigative skills, and his presence made everyone around him a better police officer and a better detective. Today, Major Anderson will award Detective Adam Easterbrook with the Jim Doyen Detective of the Year Award. So uh, one thing I realized that I'm missing from my little uh, spiels up here is the sound effects. So thank you, Major Fenton, for that. <laughs> Try to incorporate those next time. Um, it's a great honor to be able to uh, present this award to uh, Detective Easterbrook. I was uh, I got the privilege to be able to work with Jim a little bit uh, back in the day during my SAU days and, and major crimes a little bit. Uh, I learned a lot from him, so this is just very cool to be up here to be able to present this award. Um, Adam here is uh, our, one of our dedicated Burian assets in the SET team. Uh, he works uh, well, formerly known as the Street Crimes Unit for those who were in that unit years ago, uh, like myself. And uh, he is a well-respected member of the team. And one thing about set teams is 
you have to rely on each other uh, in a teamwork capacity to be able to do the job, to you know, support each other, to, whether it's you know, processing a scene, gathering evidence, or just covering each other's backs. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in there. It's a high liability uh, type of unit. Uh, so having solid, uh, experienced detectives in there is, is critical, as well as having senior detectives for the new folks that are coming in there to learn from, and that's where Adam uh, falls into play there. Uh, I've seen him interacting with uh, other members of his team. Uh, they look to him for his expertise, his experience. Uh, he's, he's just calm, his demeanor, it's just, it's, he's, he's chill, but he's very knowledgeable, very experienced. Um, and uh, one thing I did learn uh, about uh, Adam is uh, his former life as a, a math teacher. Um, I can kind of see that with the dress. Yeah, I mean, kind of, kind of math fits that. Yeah. So usually people come into this law, this business because they're not good at math, not the opposite. But you know. So anyway, um, so just a couple stories about showing his high performance. I mean, there's a lot of good, uh, outstanding performance in that team. But things that make Adam stand out this year, or 2019, can maybe compare to some other years, are some investigations he was working on. I'll just touch on a few here real quick. Uh, he had a high-level investigation involving kind of a variety of narcotics, uh, including fentanyl pills. And as you know, that's a, the latest concern, that we, one of the biggest concerns we have uh, in our county right now is uh, addressing uh, fentanyl use uh, in the overdoses. Um, so he was instrumental in uh, taking that on. Uh, other drugs were seized, uh, as well as firearms. Uh, and the person that uh, was arrested, who was uh, the instrumental kingpin on that, uh, is serving uh, uh, federal time of over 10 years. So uh, it's nice to see when certain people need to go to prison for drug crimes, because it's not just the drugs that they're involved in. It's all the other crimes, all the impacts they have on the communities for their crimes uh, for being involved in drugs, whether it's violent crime or property crimes. Drugs is always a common denominator, so can't forget that. Sorry, I went off on a little tangent there, but it's important for people to hear that. Um, another case he worked on involving sales to a UC federal agent, um, uh, seized 40 guns, uh, evidence of narcotics distribution. I assume that person is facing a lot of time too. Um, there was a follow-up that he did on a deputy who was rammed by a high-impact offender. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, sorry, it doesn't work the same. Adam jumps in there and uh, developed a arrest plan, brought his team together to make the arrest, and uh, this person was sent to prison for several years. Um, well deserving for that. Um, Adam is described as having a high work ethic, an excellent attitude, and superior competency. Um, and I see that, I, I, you know, to be honest with you, I, this is, I really didn't get to know Adam until just being assigned to Precinct 4 here last August, and, uh, and I've been able to learn a lot from him. He is kind of the go-to guy when Sergeant Brett Davis is on vacation. Uh, he's the acting uh, sergeant in there. Um, and so I'll ask him about what's going on, what's the latest as I prepare for uh, various um, presentations. Um, and, and he's in the know, not only is he involved in a lot of cases, but he also is, uh, you know, in a position to be able to present those cases and what's going on and uh, keep us all informed on uh, the latest happenings of the set team. Uh, he's always willing to help out his partners. There's no job or task too menial for him to uh, engage in. Uh, he gets in there, gets the job done. Uh, he's also routinely seen uh, teaching patrol deputies and mentoring new deputies, uh, presumably on uh, set type of uh, investigations, which is uh, critical for uh, as we train our new people up. Um, he's known for his communication, his desire to stay on top of problem areas. Uh, one of those problem areas that I was very involved in as far as helping to facilitate things and reporting out on was a uh, big drug house there at 98th and 13th Southwest in Burien, um, I'm sorry, in White Center. Um, he was very instrumental in leading that up uh, as well as with his partners. Uh, huge nuisance for the neighborhood, but fortunately that problem house is coming to an end here uh, pretty soon. Uh, he's known to put in long hours and hard work necessary to reach a successful outcome in whatever he does. He's routinely seeking to improve his performance on the job and going to training. Um, he's, I, I, from my understanding that uh, Adam is planning on being a sergeant someday, and I'm sure he's going to make a, a very good sergeant. Uh, He's got the right attitude, right demeanor to make that happen. So I wish the best of success. And 
As we all know, and when we sat down to, to figure out who was going to get what award, there was a lot of great names for in many positions, but especially for the Detective of the Year Award. So um, there's a lot of people uh, deserving, but definitely Adam stood out and was well deserving of the 2019 Jim Doyen of the Year Award. Congratulations. Okay, we are winding, winding things up with our last award. Um, and I, I wanna say uh, we are taking a different branch again in that we couldn't decide on just one, but we need two Sergeants of the Year for the department this year. And so it's with great honor to present Sergeant Blythe Minikin and Sergeant Jake Pavlovich to receive this award from Chief Olmstead and Major Matson. Come on up. So Sergeant Tony McNabb nominated Sergeant Blythe Minikin for Sergeant of the Year 2019, and he wrote, Sergeant Minikin really proved how great of a partner she was. I was out with a bad foot for three months, and Sergeant Minikin covered my work throughout the year. On one particular duty weekend, when my foot was hurting, she took the call for a homicide. She is a huge reason we were able to solve every homicide in 2018. Uh, she put me to shame. It's not exactly what he wrote. I had to clean it up a little bit. <clears throat> she kicked something, but I had to change it to submit it on the documents. <laughs> uh, on the total number of call-outs for the year, in major crimes, uh, for almost, I've been in major crimes for almost 10 years, and I've never had a partner who worked as hard as Blythe. In addition to her major crimes duties, she supervises the digital forensic unit, and last year organized a cold case library. Everything from here on down are comments from uh, members of major crimes or the units around there that, that work with Blythe. To effectively, to effectively run a unit as demanding and result driven as a major crimes unit requires a certain vision and organization. Sometimes that just means taking a look at the overall structure as a collective workplace and saying, ah, we're gonna do things a little different. I know this is anecdotal of course, but it is also indicative of something much broader. Her vision has helped our team become highly regarded with a great reputation. The vision helped us address unsolved murder cases on the shelves of the CID library. The protocol she helped establish uh, for re-examining these cold cases has breathed new life into the chances of their resolution and provides the relatives and loved ones who have long had to endure the pain of loss without justice. Blythe is a force in the unit and she uses her superpowers wisely. <laughs> Whether she was waking us up in the middle of the night to go out for a call or staffing a difficult investigation. In the conference room, you can be guaranteed a warm smile along with a steely commitment to seek justice and solve cases. Her tenacity and leadership are widely admired by teammates and prosecutors. There's no adequate way to list all the contributions Sergeant Minikin has made to the Sheriff's Office, Major Crimes Unit, and the public. On the surface, of course, there is a contemporary role of overseer that she faithful, faithfully embraces and fulfills in a way that has earned her the esteem and deep respect of those who work with her. Blythe's advocacy for the unit and the members that comprise the team is something that we all admire and appreciate. The service and commitment that she brings to the role as a sergeant in major crimes has helped the team's unit reputation, not just among the sheriff's office, but of other law enforcement contemporaries, and as well as King County prosecutors, who we work with on a daily basis. A partner and a friend who champions our individual and collective triumphs. A fierce advocate. We are thankful and grateful each day for the support she provides. Her passion and drive to solve crime, seek justice, and advocate for victims. Combined with her great ability to mentor and guide young deputies and detectives along with her meticulous organizational skills, it is clear that she was a perfect fit for this job. Sergeant Minikin works hard, some of the hardest work I've ever seen. 
Blythe is truly an exceptional, capable, and caring sergeant who deserves to be Sergeant of the Year. And not unlike many of the people who have stood up here, she doesn't want to be here. <laughs> she doesn't want the recognition because she believes she's just doing her job. It is within the highest standards and tradition of the King County Sheriff's Office and my honor to, and privilege to present King County Sheriff's Deputy Co-Sergeant of the Year to Sergeant Blythe Milliken. I should have gone first. <laughs> I was told by the boss in back that I had three minutes, and so I'm going to try to stick to that. Uh, these two sergeants are two of my favorite people uh, on this agency. I've known them for years and years. I cannot say enough good things about both of them. I'm here to do, introduce someone that most of you, because of uh, the assignments that he has been involved in over the years, know uh, by face, by reputation, or in person, and that is uh, Sergeant Jake Pavlovich. First of all, I want Jake to introduce his family here. My wife, Michelle, my daughter. Uh, Jake and Michelle have been married for 26 years. Um, they have a wonderful uh, daughter, Morgan. Jake credits his success with the Sheriff's Office uh, directly to his family. Uh, his quote here is, I can't even count the number of softball games and school functions that I missed because of the assignments that I've had on the agency, and we'll get to those. Jake almost, has almost 31 years in with, the, uh, uh, with law enforcement. The first five plus was uh, out of uh, Butte, Montana. And then he later rolled over in June of 1994 to the King County Sheriff's Office, uh, eventually uh, being assigned to the Precinct 4 uh, area. He excelled, and a short time later, he uh, was assigned uh, for the next three years to the Street Crimes Unit, where he started his work in the investigations area, a very unique area that uh, people tend to try to gravitate to, and uh, uh, Jake didn't just gravitate to it, he excelled in, in this position. He, after three years as a street crimes detective, he went back out to the streets as an MPO uh, for a little over a year, and then he got drafted as being one of the investigators in the Green River uh, Homicides Investigation. Uh, we were a small group, and he was brought in specifically for his uh, skill set that he had. Over the next 15 years, after he left uh, a little over two years in the Green River Homicides Unit, um, he spent in the Major Crimes Unit. And this is a, this is a thankless job that, uh, as Chief Olmstead pointed out, um, you're on constant call, you're called out on weekends, and you, you give a lot while you're in the Major Crimes Unit. And he did this for the next 15 years until June of 2018 when he was promoted to the rank of Sergeant. Um, he came out to uh, the contract that uh, I have worked in, um, which is the city of SeaTac, and he came out with such a level of uh, expertise uh, as a sergeant, first working as, as the fourth shift sergeant and now working as the second shift sergeant, that he believes his role is very specific as a sergeant on this agency, and which many other sergeants do also, but Jake believes very firmly that it's his job to teach the people that are assigned to him or on his squad. He loves to help guide, he helps to love mentor newer deputies, and he sees this as his uh, primary function. Um, Jake, just, Jake, as his uh, normal routine, just doesn't like to uh, tell people what to do. He will get out there on a daily and nightly basis and show people what to do and how to do it. And he feels that this is the best way to actually teach the younger uh, generation, which, surprisingly, he loves because of the, they're eager as hell to learn, and that's a quote. Um, in his off time, he runs. He does a lot of traveling with his wife and, uh, and daughter, uh, both local and more. He loves uh, watching baseball, especially a team called the Yankees. What is that, a AAA team, Yankees? <laughs> what is that? Um, uh, as I said before, these two people up here are uh, two of my favorite people on the agency. I've known them both for years. It's uh, my pleasure to uh, introduce and uh, honor Jake for being uh, the co-recipient of the Sergeant of the Year for 2019, along with Blythe Minikin.
to thank everyone for being here today. I want to again recognize the recipients of all these awards. And I'd, I'd really like to remind everyone here and watching that there were many others that these award winners competed with for the Department of the Year Awards. And it just shows throughout the organization really the strength of our bench, going back to a Yankees comment. Of, uh, but, uh, and so uh, we are strong. We have dedicated professional staff that work endlessly to serve the community members of King County and beyond because we go outside of those boundaries and we help in other areas, whether it's from transit policing to search and rescue across the state or across the nation to uh, solving a crime and assisting other agencies and in investigations um, and patrol response uh, that where everybody works together and it doesn't matter what color uniform you have on or what type of badge you're wearing. So again, I want to thank uh, everyone for being here and just know that in my heart, I recognize we are fighting battles right now. We will fight them together as one in this organization and you have my utmost respect and I'm glad to honor you today. Thank you for being here. <laughs>